So especially if you're new to freestyle, these are the two most asked about questions in terms of equipment because they are the most important, especially when it comes to shoes. They can be a bit more different, maybe not what you're expecting to see a freestyler wear. But first, let's talk about the football. So if you've been watching my videos for a few years now, you would have seen this ball, the Adidas Kafusa. It was released in 2013. I had it for around, I want to say like seven years. As you can see, there's lots of wear and tear on it. It was official match ball. It cost me around, I want to say like maybe like 60 euros, pretty reasonable price at the time. And I have been on record in saying before that this is the best ball for freestyle because I found that it was just good at everything. It had a nice soft touch. It looked good with the colors and everything, but just for every type of freestyle there is, it just seemed to work well. It was a good all round ball. But unfortunately, all good things come to an end. Now I can still freestyle with this ball, but like I said, with the wear and tear, I thought, you know what, it's time for an upgrade. It was getting a bit slippery. It doesn't have the same type of grip as before. It doesn't inflate as well as it used to. And you know, you know, things move on. It's time to get an upgrade every now and again. So recently, I want to say, yeah, November, Black Friday, I picked up the recent Adidas Champions League ball, which looks like this. Absolute beauty. You can see the difference, like how new it looks compared to the uh, previous ball. Um, I don't know what this ball is called exactly. It's just the Champions League ball from this season with the orange, the black, the yellow. Just lovely. The panel design is different to the Kafusa. There's so much more grip on it. It feels a bit more like weightier. And it's just a fantastic ball. I saw this ball and I just thought, this is the kind of vibe I want to go for. It just looks good. It looks durable. I, I expect this ball to last a long time. Like you can tell it was made for football. It was made for kicking around. And whereas with the Kafusa, it just feels a bit more softer, a bit more lightweight, more prone to damage, even though it did last me a long time. I just feel like this ball will just live forever. And I just like lose it or it gets stolen or whatever. So yeah, I'm a huge fan of this ball. If I bring it up close, you can kind of see it's like a little bit dirty, but I kind of like that. It kind of just adds a little bit more grip on it. It doesn't look the best, like if it's dirty, it looks like I don't wash it or anything. But so long as the ball's not touching my face, I'm not pressing uppers currently then I don't mind a little bit of dirt. I think it can actually help a little bit in terms of the grip. And the last thing, the price, this cost me 100 euros and that was actually on sale, the Black Friday sale. Usually it retails for like 140 euros. So compared to the previous ball, which was around 60 euros, the price of match balls has gone up a lot in the last five years or so. All right, moving on to probably something that's more important than the football itself, which are the shoes. You can see here, these are the Puma, Archive Light, I believe. I think those are the Puma Archive Light. They are actually discontinued. You can't really get them anymore. I think there's only one place you can get them, which is uh, Unisport. You'd have to go to their website, check it out, see if they're still there. I actually bought these off Philip Ron Gerton, another freestyler. 60 euros, which is a very reasonable price for a shoe, especially this rare and this unavailable. And uh, yeah, they're just great for freestyle. So I've used these shoes in the past. I've had multiple pairs of Pumas before. Uh, this colorway is probably my favorite one I've had so far, just the black on black, the white Puma logo, the white sole, and then you've got a little bit of pattern on the back as well. Just lovely, very smart. Now these are a casual shoe. These were designed for like, you know, casual wear and freestylers actually just found them by accident and sort of stumbled across them by accident and just managed to make them work for freestyle because the, the main benefit is that the sole is very flat. It's very flexible as well. Like you can see like, you do need a flexible sole for certain tricks and styles within freestyle, but also these are so light. I would go and weigh them, but to be honest, I can't be bothered to put them on my scale and stuff. But let me tell you, these are just very light. You know, it feels like you're just walking on clouds. Another great benefit as well is that they've got a very like flat surface where the toes are, which is perfect for like, you know, when you're doing tricks, you want you want absolute precision. They don't look like much in terms of like design of like, you know, especially for freestyle, but if you just got that flat top, the flat sole, they are great. Now, they aren't perfect. They do tend to wear down and get destroyed very quickly. You can tell like the way I'm holding them, they're very flexible. That you know, this material here is prone to rip. You see a lot of freestyles with their toes sticking out the front and whatnot. But whilst you're using them, they are very good for freestyle. The only downside, as, apart from everything else that I just mentioned there in terms of like the durability, is I don't like the heel. Now the heel is good, but I find that it doesn't offer too much support. Like if you look at other sports like football, rugby, you know, could be anything, even like golf and stuff, you find that the hills are always much more harder. And this one is very flexible. Again, it's just a comfort, casual, leisure wear type of shoe. So it's not designed for that type of thing. But if you're playing sports, you want to say that can lock you in a bit more. Uh, so what I do to combat that is just tie the laces up really tight because that just kind of pulls this in a bit more around the hill and it feels a bit more stable. 
The second thing which I don't particularly like about the shoe, which is actually a benefit, but also a con in this case, is that the flat sole, great for tricks, but in terms of like impact and like safety and injury prevention, I don't think like the having a shoe so flat like this is suitable for all foot types, especially not my one. So that's one thing to be aware of when considering this shoe. So like I said before, these shoes are hard to come by, but there are alternatives which are very similar. Most prominently are the four freestyle, but there's some other brands out there as well. I'll put some pictures up so you can see they're very easy to search. You can buy them online. So if you're interested in these type of shoes, you can, you can find them online without a doubt. One final thing I want to mention following on from what I just said about like the flatness of the shoe and like the uh, stability is that I have put some special insoles in there. This is like a gel insole. I don't want to rip them out because I'm about to go and practice. So I want to put them back in again, but you can see if I just press down, kind of softens it up. And I think that helps with the impact. So if you have a pair of shoes, consider the insoles, you know, the insoles not, might not be perfect for your type of shoe. And when you're jumping a lot, there's lots of impact on hard ground. It's just an extra little way to protect yourself. They're pretty cheap, like 10 euros. Find your size, stick them in and go about your merry business. So that's it as far as the gear that I'm using currently for my freestyle sessions. Leave a comment, let me know what ball and the shoe combination you're using right now. It's always interesting to hear that. And do me a favor, like the video whilst you're down there. But right now we're gonna go and have a freestyle session. So yeah, let's do it. Okay, here we are back at the spot. Today, the plan for the session is I wanna work on my hop the wilds because I feel like they're lacking a little bit recently. And aside from that, I'm just gonna take it pretty easy. I wanna do some clippers, maybe some blocking. We'll see how it goes. All right, here we are back again with another voiceover. So warming up and straight away, I moved my camera across because this place where I was just there was a little bit dirty. So moved the cross. And what you're gonna see here now is me failing half around the world a lot. For some reason, I couldn't get my touch right and I was making careless mistakes, shall we say. And I just wanna keep that in there and show you that it's not always, you know, I, I mostly put in my best bits and the highlights of the session, but sometimes it's just rough and you just gotta try and push through it. And I think it's a good idea to show that. You can see I'm not really getting much height on the ball. It's not flowing, my touch is a little bit off and that's normal. Sometimes it takes me a little bit of time to warm up and get into the swing of things. And then some days I don't, get into the swing of things at all and it's a pretty rubbish session so i think it's important to share that and hopefully that motivates you and i don't want to just show a highlight reel where i'm just smashing everything and then you go freestyle you got to remember that these sessions they last around 45 minutes to an hour sometimes a little bit longer and all you're seeing is three or four minutes of it or five minutes so these are the highlights but i just wanted to show in some fails as well so as you can see i didn't have too much success with the half round wads so I moved on to the Hop the Wilds as intended and suddenly I started getting better. I felt like I was finally warmed up and I felt that, you know, things were going well and I was pretty surprised by how many I did there. I'm not sure how many that, that was exactly. I haven't counted, but I was pretty happy. And then after a bit of Hop the Wild training, I wanted to switch it up, try some no touches, but here you can see here like this little bit here. This is just pure freestyle messing around, just doing whatever comes to mind and just, you know, just enjoying freestyle. So that was a nice little clip. I was pretty happy with that. But yeah, with the no touches, you know, you can see there with my style, I'm a little bit off balance and, and everything else. So I wasn't really feeling it, went straight back to the Hop the Wilds. The no touches, I want to train them so bad, but I have to be very careful with my injury. So hopefully in the coming weeks, I'll be able to practice them properly and move away from these basics. So yeah, just went straight back to the Hop the Wilds. And yeah, Hop the Wilds are Hop the Wilds. There's not really much I can say. I was pretty happy with the consistency. The style was okay. It can be better, but like I made point of at the start of the video is that i want to improve on them they haven't been feeling great recently so it was just nice to focus on them and uh, get to grips with them i'll tell you what hop the worlds will humble you if you go long enough it becomes more of a question of your fitness and your legs and technique <sighs> Whew. it's tough but it's a great workout and i know that the more you push it that way your fitness is going to come back quicker i'm still in the process of getting my fitness back so like I said in the first training video, it's gonna be a slow and long process, but I feel like we're making progress already. So now I'm gonna leave the lowers for now because I'm not really feeling it that much. I reckon my last session was much better, but I'm happy to have done some decent hop the wilds. Now I'm gonna do some clippers, some blocking, some random stuff that comes to mind and just, you know, try and enjoy it a bit. So let's do it. So yeah, like I said in that clip there, they are tiring. You know, it gets really tiring doing hop the wilds because it's just a test of your 
fitness and you jump in, you're switching feet and you really have to focus on what you're doing and it becomes quite challenging very quickly. But we're going to see an improvement in the coming weeks. So yeah, moved on to uh, some heel clippers and that type of stuff, you know, a style which I really enjoy doing. Haven't shown too much of it since I started this training series again, but we're going to focus on that in the coming weeks. I'm really excited about freestyle at the minute. There's a lot that I want to work on, but it's a slow process and I just have to take my time with it. You know, we're going to extend the sessions. We're going to make them longer. This one was around about 45 minutes, I believe. Pretty quick session, but I managed to get a lot in. And by this point, I was just kind of, you know, doing some blocks. I was kind of like losing a bit of focus and I could feel like the session was fizzling out. Sometimes it, that happens, you know, you just kind of like you lose your your focus and you're not really uh, doing as well as you should be. But, you know, I was pretty happy with this lock-in combos and all these type of stuff, nonetheless. And again, like I said, there's so much I want to practice. So I'm going to hit you with another uh, training session in the coming days, I think. I'm pretty excited to train again. My leg feels good, so that's good. And yeah, everything feels good. So I just want to thank you for watching. Please drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. Thank you. For premium freestyle courses, videos, and discussion, check out the freestylecommunity.com. The link is in the description.